Alright, today we're going to look at a tutorial on how to set up your Gmail when you have a WordPress site, for instance, when you opt for a business email. So obviously, since it's an external email, you have to set it up to work with your website and the contact form, and of course, with your external Gmail account. So we start by downloading SMTP, then we head to the settings, save and continue. We continue. Next, it asks us for certain information like client ID, secret key, and a redirect. All right, now we need to go to Google Cloud Console, then we log in with the email. This is super important. We're logging in with the workspace email we're setting things up with. This is the main email, the primary administrator of the email account you've contracted. We are going to accept and continue. And now we'll look for the GIMP API, which will help us set things up with the website. Here we simply click on Enable. But remember that you must select a project. You can create a new one or just select the default one that appears listed under your domain. First, choose a project and then click on Enable. You won't see anything appear. Just click on New Project at the top. That's basically just giving it a name. But in this case, we use the one that shows up by default. It should also appear to you with the corresponding name of your domain. So we select Enable now. We click on ARIA. Keep in mind that this is done mainly because when you have, for example, the default webmail emails from a hosting service, when it's found in an external email service, after leaving the emails to be remotely managed, the contact form will no longer work with external emails. So this configuration is necessary. Now that we're here, we need to create the credentials. So we go to the credentials page, click on create credentials, and then we enter the user information. Click and then follow. We place, now we wait for it to load. Then we move on to the second part. And here you can give the application any name you want. It could be SMTP or not. It's not important here. What is important is that you enter the email you're setting up with. Here, for the developer contact, you can use any email, even a personal one. It's just for notifications, but it doesn't really matter. Next, we simply press save and continue. In part three, we don't have any specific restrictions. So we just press save and continue. And it's super important here to select the web application, which is the first option. Leave the client name as the default name set by the system. And here's what's really important, the redirect URI. You insert it on the WordPress configuration page where we just reviewed the SMTP settings. That's the part where it shows to the IP in CMYK. We copy the redirect that appears. And then we add the URL. Pay close attention to authorize redirections and create. There, we paste the address we just copied. There are still a few more steps. But it's almost ready. So there, we put done. We're almost there. Just a couple more settings, and we'll be able to leave everything configured and connected to our WordPress site with the contact form.
Let's go to the consent screen. And at the top where it says internal user type, we'll mark it as external and leave it as production. This way we tell it that it's now enabled to start changing the data all set. And now we need to get the credential details, which we need to transfer. That's the last thing we have to do. Request the system on the WordPress site in the SMTP. And over here, I'm going to leave these details visible because I'm going to erase this setup later on. So I want to make it very clear which pieces of information you should copy so you can follow along. So we copy the client ID and paste it right there. Next, we copy the secret key, which is further down. Make sure you only copy that and don't accidentally copy any extra text. That way it won't cause any errors. And now we connect to Google. We log in with the workspace email we're setting up. It's very important not to use a different email than the one we are configuring. Obviously, if using subdomains, we're good. Perfectly, I can save the password. Above all, there's a part about authorization. If they unlock it, it will grant permission. And we're all set. Now just scroll down a bit more. For the sender's name, I recommend using a personal name or the email address itself better a personal name, because that's how the message will show up in the inbox. It could be any name, since this is for internal use. Save and continue. Scroll down and click on save and continue. Scroll down. And in this section, we just skip this step. We don't need to add any recommendations or anything like that. Skip this step in the setup and you're all set. Everything's connected. The entire configuration is okay. Now to wrap up the settings and we're all set. Now we just need to confirm that the emails are coming through properly. Let's go to the contact page and approve the contact form. We managed to send it. And now I need to confirm that the message has indeed arrived. So let's go check the mail. And no, nothing has arrived. No, you just need to refresh. And there's the message. So it's working. No issues. It's OK. And now you can use your external email with the contact form without any issues. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found the video useful, please give it a like or subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.